Good morning. I'm Sharon Biggers, the director of DHEC's Division of Tobacco Prevention and Control, and I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. Our division serves as South Carolina's representative to the National Tobacco Control Program through CDC's Office on Smoking and Health. The team is comprised of 10 program staff with a combined over 100 years of experience in tobacco control, with each member focusing on their own specialty area as a part of a comprehensive tobacco control program. The goals of our program include preventing initiation of commercial tobacco use among youth, promoting quitting among both adult and youth tobacco users, eliminating exposure to secondhand smoke and vaping aerosol, and advancing health equity by identifying and eliminating commercial tobacco product-related inequities and disparities. You'll notice that these goals, as well as our program's work plans, support and align with those contained in the South Carolina State Tobacco Plan for 2021 through 2026, eliminating the toll of tobacco products in South Carolina. As you just heard from the opening keynote presentation, years of targeted marketing of tobacco products have led to significant impacts on many vulnerable population groups in both the United States and South Carolina. As you can see from the data shared, the adult prevalence rate in the state has remained relatively unchanged over a number of years. You may have even heard that South Carolina is now part of Tobacco Nation, a distinction defined by state trends in adult smoking over time that have consistently ranked among the top 25% in the United States across several years. In addition to higher adult smoking rates, states included in Tobacco Nation also share a number of other characteristics, including states that are less well-off financially, having poorer overall health outcomes, having more limited access to care, and lacking smoke-free laws and other tobacco control policies designed to protect the public and encourage cessation. Despite these challenges, we know we must do better for our state. Through our detailed surveillance, we've been able to take a deeper dive into our tobacco using population. And in doing so, several trends began to emerge. What we found from this deeper dive has helped set the course for our next five years. While the Division of Tobacco Prevention and Control continues to serve South Carolinians at the state level, we are planning a new emphasis on accelerating reductions in tobacco use within geographic regions of the state that have the highest adult smoking or cancer mortality, among population groups with the highest use rates which may be caused by issues such as perceived lack of access to services and programs or cultural or language barriers. Areas where residents aren't equally protected in smoke-free and aerosol-free environments. And among groups targeted by product marketing in their communities or online to encourage experimenting or perpetuate addictions. By addressing these inequities head on and igniting reductions in these high prevalence areas, we should then begin to see a corresponding reduction in the state's overall adult smoking prevalence, leading to fewer chronic diseases, lives saved, and a new generation growing up tobacco free. To do this, we are expanding the offerings of our state's outstanding cessation programs, such as the South Carolina Tobacco Quit Line, about which you'll hear in great detail next from Dr. Katie Wynn. And we invite you to share the good news and increase reach and use of this service. We also want to support all healthcare providers to address tobacco use with their patients routinely and refer them to effective quitting support, but most especially among our FQHC and rural community health center providers who see these patients regularly and often with comorbid conditions, such as diabetes or hypertension. We also seek to address South Carolina's all too high maternal mortality rates and infant mortality rates from prematurity and low birth weight that may be brought on by tobacco use. By doing our part to support pregnant tobacco users in quitting through programs such as Baby and Me Tobacco Free. 
This program has helped support the birth of 48 healthy babies since its inception, and it's expanding not only to reach women in additional geographic regions, but also to provide remote options to better address the needs of program participants. While we continue to support quitting in these high priority areas, it's also imperative that we re-educate community leaders who aren't even aware that their residents remain unprotected from exposure to secondhand smoke and vaping aerosol in public places. In fact, only about 42% of our state's residents are covered by some level of protection, and even fewer of these are comprehensive protections. Whether looking at the Tobacco Division's adult tobacco survey results or the county health rankings, the top five may differ in order, but they are consistently in the same places. Our team is doubling down on these geographic areas, such as Dillon, Marlboro, Chesterfield, Allendale, and Barnwell counties, to support community coalition efforts designed to implement effective tobacco control measures shown to reduce use. But as you can see, there is still much work to be done in other areas of the state. To spark conversation around smoke-free and vape-free environments, local DHEC health, health, health directors and region staff are joining in to educate these leaders and provide smoke-free Palmetto State certification awards to those with comprehensive policies protecting their residents from these harms. Finally, after historic declines in reducing youth cigarette smoking, we are continuing to broaden our efforts to present the, prevent the use of electronic nicotine delivery systems, such as e-cigarettes and other emerging products among young people. To address this issue, peer group-based digital and social media campaigns are being implemented to raise awareness about product addictiveness and potential health hazards, such as impact on brain development. Ev evaluation findings have been very positive and show that these campaigns have high awareness, relevance, appeal, and effectiveness among South Carolina youth. Additionally, South Carolina is the first state in the nation to offer the Quit the Hit program to provide quitting support to the multitude of young people who started using these products for fun thinking they were harmless water vapor only to now find themselves heavily addicted to nicotine products. Through, though the science is still out on any potential benefits these products may offer to adult users, we can all agree that they should never be in the hands of our young people. We also hailed the tremendous local coalition work going on across the state in York County, the Tri-County area in Charleston, and in the upstate Greenville area for taking bold action to better your communities. I encourage everyone today to listen and speak to the leaders of these groups to see how you can start building towards these important efforts in your community. In closing, I'd like to ask you to join with the Division of Tobacco Prevention and Control in reestablishing the urgency to address tobacco use in our state. We know what works. As we saw with COVID, the next pandemic could be closer than we think. And it would be a true shame for us not to learn the lessons that it taught us about increased disease severity and poorer outcomes for those with underlying conditions, including smoking. Today is the perfect opportunity to learn and make these important connections. Together, we can remove South Carolina from Tobacco Nation. Thank you, and I urge you to reach out to me with any questions or if there are ways that the Tobacco Division can support you in your work.